Oh, I had to pop on and make a vid here. Somebody on one of my channels in the comment section uh, clued me. Looking up my, looking up for my savior. Or no, it was Delilah Raw. Holy crap! Look at it now. I would have probably been looking anyway, but I want to give her credit. Anyway, whew, here's the last disc we'll run. I pulled it up earlier this evening, and we're going to see some solar wind speeds. Click the box here, lower right, pop up around 900 something. And I thought about making a video, but I didn't. That happened back here somewhere. Then look at this event. Whoa. Looks like took a major hit. Let's pull these solar wind speeds through. As far as I could tell when I pulled it through, there's not a lot of missing time, which is wonderful. Okay, there's there's what I saw this evening. 976. A pretty good blast there. You can see all the chevrons and stuff. Usually that means something's gonna happen. Look at all the plasma that stayed behind. We're not getting rid of it like we used to. There's 748. So this event, 926. So that solar wind event occurred. The first one, high speed solar wind event. 2015 UTC yesterday on the second. So that'd be like about three o'clock, three fifteen. Now here's what uh, nobody's reporting. Okay, we get the solar wind speeds on Ace and Discover, which are out at, out at this L1 Lagrange point which is out here 930,000 miles in front of the earth solar uh, solar wind is all collected data on the discover in the ace satellites the ace went up around in the mid 90s discover about 20 years later they both do the same thing they're 930,000 miles in front of the earth so we get solar wind data from them and this data that we're seeing here on ISWA is all being read by these GOES 13, 14, and 15 satellites. So this is the solar wind speed within our magnetopause. Now our magnetopause with the bow shock and all the magnetic field lines basically shield us from the solar wind coming from the sun. So that has nothing to do with these numbers. This solar wind speed is all being caused by the presence of Nemesis, which is behind the Earth. Look at all the energy building in. You can see it here. We got the false bow shock showing up. Look at that. There's an impact there. That was on the first. These two are synced, basically. These are the Fock radiation belts. That's 100,000 electron volts. 4 million electron volts. That's as high as we get on these computer simulations. Look how the magnetopause is being rocked around. Look at this. And nothing really happened space weather wise. So it all has to be coming from Nemesis and or this big planet out in front. I think this big planet out in front is playing a big role. You see these uh, blue IMF field lines trying to creep into the picture and there they are spreading in there that's from that big planet that passed ace on October 16th check out my hypotheses below my videos I put them both down there and this high solar wind hypothesis might come into play a little bit on this one since we got solar wind speeds extraordinarily high when this event happened, it was over a thousand. When it was really went kablooey up here, and I'm going to show you that here in a second. 
So anyway, you can see the bow shock in the back. It's a false bow shock, this broken line, or this jiggity jaggedy line. These, I think, are going above 4 million. There's the Earth. All around the Earth will be embayed with gamma radiation. So at 100,000 100, electron volts, that's when electrons start getting sti stripped from atoms, which is called ionization. And I made that Purple Skies video, and that's what's happening. We, the nitrogen and the, even the oxygen in our atmosphere is being ionized. Electrons are being stripped off of it. But it's all in the upper atmosphere. This stuff really isn't reaching the ground, thankfully, or we'd be toast. So here we go. There's the first high solar wind number 2015. You can see this playing through here. And then it went 976, 748, 775. And then it went back to 572. So that was not a long duration event, like 12 minutes. 2015 to... Yeah, 2027. Okay, so then we got a lull in the action here. It's starting to heat up again. So you've got a lot of density coming from the front. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. Look, it's not shedding this plasma. This plasma is still hanging around. That's why I say our magnetosphere is either getting weaker. I think it's definitely getting weaker. But these polar cap buildings are looking pretty dark but look how few of them there are at times and they don't close as often I think what's happening is Nemesis is just getting closer you can see the influence of Nemesis here with these blue interplanetary magnetic field lines they're trying to creep up the middle these like See how they reach? Ooh, wow. That got up. That went inside the 20 for sure. So these are Earth radii down here in the increments of 5. So we got 20 Earth radii. That one went intruded, I would say, at least to about 15 Earth radii, maybe close to 10. And each Earth radii is 4,000 miles. So I figure this is 80,000 miles behind the planet. Where all this stuff's going on right here at the 20 mark. But anyway, and look at this. This was at uh, 2355 UT, UTC. I'm just going to show you for, in, for comparison. Look at these solar wind speed numbers. These are what's being recorded up at ACE. Okay. There's a gap. That's a data gap. So there's, there's something that's blocking the uh, data relay between ACE and uh, the ground tracking stations. But uh, so here's the phi angle. So we were running pretty steady there. Remember this morning, that's what I put in my video. Then things started to break up as far as the interplanetary magnetic field. Stability and connections. And then it dropped all the way down at 1700 UTC make it like an earth to earth to sun connection now remember all these this interplanetary magnetic field connections are not just between the earth and the sun nemesis is in play behind the earth the earth and the big planet the past ace you got to read my hypothesis number one on october 16th and the sun they're all four connected they have to be so then all of a sudden we we lost something there it started to climb up well it was just in, unstable but 180 is the sun to earth connection zero is an earth to sun then it dropped back down here and then it went back up to 180 and went pretty steady for a while but this is when and then all this instability here and that's where you see all this craziness going on over here but as you can see the solar wind numbers 
or the density spikes or nothing they nothing matches so we're getting this big density wave being hurled at us that's coming from uh, some type of an interplanetary magnetic field disruption and uh, I think it's being slung at us from that big planet out in front so anyway I, I'm down to 1020 I'm running out of time unfortunately there so there it is there there's the uh, big wave hit there's 580 565 okay 787 787 and okay, this is when this last event started <clears throat> Today at uh, 31 UTC after midnight. Wow. Look at all that energy, man. You know, it's not coming from the sun because it's not being recorded on ACE. Whoa. Dang it. What happened there? I messed it up. Okay, I reloaded it. Here we are. We're back at midnight. Oh, 31 today. 787. Let me just step it through. 9, 7, 10, 58, 8, 99, 10, 22, 8, 88. These are all four-minute increments. And look at all that, man. That's a lot of freaking energy. I've never seen it go all yellow and green like that before. 499, 483. There's the blue plasma. Look at this huge bow shock out here. It's like at least 1, 5, 10, 15. It's 20 Earth radii. Thick. Full of density. Out in front of the planet. You know it's not coming from the sun. Look at that, man. Look at that. And the solar wind speed's not even that high. I mean, the Nemesis solar wind speed. But watch, it's going to jump again. I believe. <laughs> Look at that blue plasma, man. There it goes. 809. 1337. That's pretty high. Look, at it. it's going every which way. That's why this thing got one whack the shreds over here 877 828 7 to 11 4 9 94 see if it does it again I guess not at least not on this run okay so it started at 0031 so it wasn't a super long event either, but I mean, look at all the freaking instability. Eight forty seven ten. I woke, so it started winding down at three. So it was almost a three-hour event. So that could fall into my hypothesis number two, where uh, maybe a little uh, coronal hole stream got connected up with the uh, with Nemesis. Anyway, let me pull this through. Wow. So starting back at, uh, I forget what time it was, that first event. Oh, yeah, it was 13 something, right? No, not 20. Oh, yeah, 2015. Okay, 2015. That's when we got the first big jump in the solar wind speed from Nemesis. Look at that. Well, I'm running out of time. Darn it. So I'll just pull this through real quick. I had Geospace pulled up. It wasn't to super remarkable now, but this is just the last three, three to four hours, and the, the event had concluded by then. Oh, MLSO, I want to show you this. It gave us a lot of images. Look at that thing. If that isn't a freaking planet. I don't know what it is. And you can see them moving around. God bless. 
uh, running out of time. Peace, and I'm out.